Malachi chapter 3 from verse 6, the Bible says, For I am the Lord, I do not change. Therefore you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. Yet from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, in what way shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this. Says who? The Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heavens, and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. This expression here is not found anywhere else in the Bible. In no other occasion concerning no other thing. Try me now in this. It's not found when we talk about salvation. It's not found when we talk about a blessing in your family. It's not found anywhere else in the Bible but here. Try me now in this. And what is this? This that God is challenging us to put him to the test. Tithes and offerings. Look at the meaning of this expression. Try me now. Or put to the test. Put to the test. Because that's what God was challenging the people of Israel to do. He was challenging the people of Israel to put him to the test. Now the people of Israel here, they had gone away from God. Not only those who were living there now, but they had gone away from God a long while ago. A long while ago, they were not being faithful to God. A long while ago, they were not observant to the commandments of God. A long while ago, they departed from the faith. They were still coming to the temple and bringing offerings to the temple. But the offerings they were bringing were not pleasant. They were still bringing tithes to the altar, but the tithes they were bringing were not pleasant. So God was telling them, return to me and I will return to you. So they were asking God, how can we return? And the very first step was to give back to God what belonged to God. They were not just unfaithful. They were not simply taking what was God's. If you read the book of Malachi, the people were corrupt. They were unfaithful to their spouse. Even the priests, they were corrupt to the point of God saying like this, who will shut the door of my temple? Because everyone was corrupt. Everyone were, was disobedient to the word of God. And God was telling them, return to me and I will Return to you. What you do, I will mimic back. You give one step towards me, I will give a step towards you. You come closer, and I will come what? Closer. You give another step, and I'll give another step. God, he will mimic what you do to him back to you. So God said, return to me, and I will return to you. So they said, how, how do we return to you? Can we rob you? 
Then God said, yet you have done so in tithes and what? Offering. Tithes and offerings, for you to understand well, it was a commandment. In the book of Leviticus, in the book of Leviticus, the book of the law of the Levites, the priests to the people, God instituted offerings and tithes to be given in certain ways. It was not simply come and give. They, they, they had to make the effort. It had to come from an effort. And they were no longer following those efforts. They wanted to do things their own way. So God considered it robbery. So God said, return what is mine. That's the very first step for you to return to me. The very first thing you have to do is stop robbing me. That's what God was telling them. The very first step of your return to me is stop robbing me. Be faithful to me. Then God said to them, if you are faithful to me, if you bring the tithes to the storehouse, you can put me to the test. You can try me in this. And you will see if I will not open the windows of heaven. Pour out blessings without measure. So let us understand here now what it is to put to the test. Put to the test to cause someone or something, in this case God, to be in a situation that shows how strong, how good that person or thing really is, in our case, God. That's to put to the test. When God challenges you to try him in this, in your tithes and in your offerings, that's what God is saying. You will see how strong and how good I am. That's what God is saying. You will see how strong and how good I am. I will open for you the windows of heaven. Who can open the windows of heaven if not to him? And that's what God wants to do. To open the windows of heaven. But before he can open the windows of heaven. You have to put him to the test. You have to try him. Nowadays many people have lost this challenging spirit. Many people have lost this challenge within them. Christianity has to be holy, holy, holy. Yes, indeed, we have to be holy as he is holy. We have to as he is holy. Nonetheless, in the days of your hardship, in the days of your difficulties, you should not accept. You should do what the Bible requires from us. To put him to the test. Put his word to the test and you will see how good, how strong his word is. Some of you have testimonies, have great testimonies. How you started your business from nothing. How you went from nothing to become something good. And it did not happen because you were just worshipping God. It happened because you were worshipping God. But you also put him to the test. You challenged and God showed you how good and how strong he is. Are you understanding the tala tala? Yes or no? This is God challenging you to put him to the test. In the days of hardship, in the days of difficulties, in the days of need, God is telling you, you are not alone. If you are faithful to me, you can put my words to the test. Because I guarantee that my words will be fulfilled. It takes us back. If you have watched the movie Nothing to Lose, the story of Bishop Macedo. In the first movie, Nothing to Lose, the, the, the volume one. You will see him there when he had no more money to give to his wife so she could do the groceries. He opened the Bible in Malachi 3 and he said, Don't you, have you not said for me to put you to the test? So how can this be? I'm faithful to you. How can I be living like this? He challenged God. And when he challenged God, somebody came and dropped food at his door. Food at his door. At his door. Do step. Later on, he knew it was a family member who somehow knew their struggle and came to help. 
But did he ask his family member? Who did he challenge? That's what the Bible says. Given it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall men put into your bosom? God will use someone. God will use something. A situation will be caused. So what is yours or what you need can be provided. But, but before this can happen, God is challenging you to put him to the test. Which means the following is not every situation you face in life that you should accept. That should say it is the will of God. Because it's not the will of God for you to be in misery. Jesus said, I came that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. Includes financial blessing. Not only financial blessing. Many people have money, but they don't have abundance. But includes financial stability as well. Includes independence as well. Life and life more abundantly. How does it come when you put the word of God to the test? How do I know what the Bible says is true? How do I know that the Bible, may I borrow yours, how do I know that the Bible is not one more book? I've read many books in my lifetime. How do I know this is not just one more book? How do I know this is not a Harry Potter book? How do I know that when you take the word of God and you put it to the test? The Bible is like a recipe book. When you try and you obey you see the results of his word. So in this passage here, God is challenging you to put him to the test. So you can see how good, so you can see how strong he is. And he will not fail you. Now, why are there Christians who do not have this faith? To put God to the test. To come to him and speak to him with boldness. Based upon his word. Because it's God challenging us to put him to the test. Why are there Christians who do not have this, what can I say, this faith to challenge him? Two things. Either they have not been in a position that it's either live or die. It's either God does something or you are lost. Perhaps they've never been in that situation like Moses was when the Pharaoh's army was behind him and in front of him the Red Sea. When you are in a, in a situation like that, you have nothing else, no one else, then you say, God! And his words come alive in your life. Either they have not been in a situation like this, they have been determined to see God's words fulfilled in their lives so they can glorify him. Or like the people of Israel in the days of the preacher of Malachi, their conscience was heavy. Because they knew how they were living. They knew how they were exercising or not exercising their faith. Accusations. How can I challenge God if I have been living wrongly before him? When Adam and Eve sinned, they did not dare to look up to the heavens. When they heard the voice of God, what did they do? They hid. So when you have nothing to hide, listen, you have nothing to hide. You are faithful to him. You are honoring God. You have no reason to hide from him as Adam and Eve did. Because Adam and Eve took what was God's. So they hid. So instead of taking what is God's, we give back to him what is his. You must not hide. You have to expose yourself. As the Bible says here, try him. Who is understanding the tala tala? You don't have to hide. You who are struggling in your financial life, in your family, you are struggling. But you are faithful to God. Stop hiding. Stop hiding. Adam and Eve, they took what was God's. They hid. You are not taking what is God's. You are giving back to him. Stop hiding and challenge him. And you will see how good 
in how strong God is. Putting to the test, if you go to the book of Kings, first book of Kings, let us go there, chapter 17. First book of Kings, chapter 17. Let us talk about put God to the test. How can we do that? How can we put God to the test? In Malachi, the preacher said, in tithes and what? Offerings. Prioritizing God. With your first fruits, prioritizing God. When you prioritize him, you put his word to the test. What he said will happen. King 17, verse 8, the Bible says, Kings 17, first book of Kings 17, verse 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, a widow was there, gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please, bring me a little water in a cup, that I may drink. And she was going to get it. And he called to her and said, Please, bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin. A handful, a handful of flour. It's not much in a bin. What else? In the little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son. That we may eat it in what? Die. Look at the situation of this mother. The husband died, which was common in those days of war, without borders and laws. Was common for people to go to war and die. There were many widows in Israel, the Bible says in the book of Hebrew, but Elijah came to her. Only to her. There are many widows there. But she was the one who saw the change in her life. So Elijah came to her asking for water. She brought water. Now he asked for food. She said, as the Lord your God knows, I have no bread. I have a handful of flour. A little oil in a jar. I'm gathering sticks. I'm going to bake the last meal in my son and I will die. What a terrible situation. Terrible situation. She was hopeless. Hopeless. And perhaps that's how you find yourself hopeless. But hey, just like the word of God came to her, the word of God is coming to you. Just like God spoke to her through Elijah, God is also speaking to you. And the Bible says, and Elijah said to her, do not what? Fear. Verse 13, do not fear. And I say to you, do not fear. God knows your struggles. He knows your problems. He knows how hard it is for you to cope with the financial world of today. God knows you're struggling. But he brought you here. He, 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 somehow, God led you to be here. You could have gone home. People went home. You could have gone, but you stayed here. What for? For you to hear this. Your situation can change. So Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first. And bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord, God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry, until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. So she went and did according to the word of 
Elijah. When she did according to the word of Elijah, she was putting the word of Elijah to the test. She was hopeless. I'm going to cook the last meal, feed my son, myself, and die. Elijah brought her hope. But the hope was not, hey, God will bless you, God will multiply. No, the word of God was, first, you will do something for me. Because Elijah represented God. He was the voice of God. So first, God. Because thus says the Lord God of Israel, whatever you have will not finish. And she went and she did according to what he said. She was hopeless. But now, hey, if I do for you first, God will multiply everything. That's what God is saying he will. But how will I know? How do I know God will multiply in my life? How do I know God will help me? How do I know I will be like that widow? When you put his word to the test. That's what she did. She put his word to the test. And the Bible says, verse 15. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah and she and he in her household ate for many days the bin of flour was not used up nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah challenge the word of God. He said, try me now in this. This woman, she put the word of Elijah to the test. And she saw the impossible becoming possible. You must have this fire inside of you. Because God does not lie. Put him to the test. Challenge him. Once again, when you take what is God and you use for yourself, you don't have this courage. You don't have this courage. You don't have this right to come to God and say, hey, God. Because you are taking what is God's. If you are taking what is God's, the normal reaction is to do what? Hide. But when you give back to God what is his, when you do not rob him, when you return to God, then you must have this boldness inside of you to put his word to the test. Amém.